Horikoshi brings us in on this chapter with my guy Kirishima. Dedicating a couple of chapters, I'm going to presume, maybe to Kirishima. This is awesome because I love him. Kirishima is an awesome character and, I, and I'm liking what Horikoshi is doing because I thought we were really going to kick right into this arc. I thought we were really going to get right into the gripes, right into the middle of it. But I love the slow build up, the slow build up to the climax. I think it's awesome. Um, and I'm loving how we're getting like the uh, different, uh, what's it called? Um, what is it called? In not interviews, no, internships. I'm loving how we're getting the different internships of the other characters because honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen like that. So hey guys, how's it going on? I'm Shinami Sam here to do a review on Boku no Hero Academia, chapter 132. This chapter was lit. First of all, the ending of it, I loved it, but Shigaraki and Overhaul talking, come on guys, that was so hype. Especially when Shigaraki's talking. And then the two of them, I, can't, I think his name was M Mimic and um, the other guy, Corio, something like that. Um, those two people, they were like, don't get cocky. And I was just like, yo, Shigaraki, this is the thing. Like, Shigaraki is a beast. Shigaraki could have easily done something, in my opinion. He, he could have easily saw that coming. He could have been like, bam, bam, touch bell for them. And then they would be like obliterated right then. But he decided not to, um, because obviously he wants to join in with this alliance. I feel, I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, I've realized throughout these past couple of chapters, uh, that overhaul and the whole Yakuza thing, that's they're just really reinforcing how low the, the Yakuza is. And if you think about it, yeah, the Yakuza is just organised crime pretty much. They're like the mobs, you could say, maybe to an extent. So yeah, I'm not, I am not surprised at the way that they're being characterised. I'm not surprised by the way that they're being kind of like insulted by the other villains. But still, like, I wouldn't mess around with overhaul and his gang. They look like the real deal. They look like they're, they're, they're the business. Um, and they're about to show it. So, yeah, with Overhaul and Shigaraki, we obviously get this discussion. And this is a pretty much what forms the entire basis of this chapter. And it's the it's the, the anti-quirk guns. I'm just going to call them that, the anti-quirk guns. Now, there's a lot of discussion happening whether is this... And is, does this bullet uh, totally permanently remove the quirk or is it temporarily negate it? Now... I'm not sure on which side of the fence I sit on right now, but if I had to make a decision, I think personally it is permanent. I think it permanently removes the quirk. And that is only because on the basis of what Overhaul said. Now, what Shigaraki said, Shigaraki said this. Immediately after um, Mr. Compress was shot by this bullet, he was unable to activate his quirk. It says something along the lines like that. But then Overhaul said... All for one was all for one had the power to remove people's quirks and thus taking control of them. So the way that he referenced all for, all, all for one, and then overall said, "I wanted to polish off on that approach or some similar along the lines of that." It kind of shows you that. Hang on, maybe overall can overall it produced this quirk, this this gun. Sorry, produced this bullet. These bullets, these petal, um, these bullets to permanently negate the quirk. So, is this quirk, is this arc that we're going to with Overhaul, is this arc like the quirk negation arc, like, you know, stealing of the quirks and the heroes losing it? I think that'll be pretty awesome, man. I think it kind of makes sense with this series, if you think about it. A series where the whole of society is just totally controlled by quirk, not controlled by quirks, but totally consumed by quirks. Everyone has it, pretty much. I think it's gonna, I think it'll be pretty cool. And it'll be kind of interesting with Deku's point of view, because then, obviously, it will be like flip side, so a lot of people who had quirks haven't. So Deku will kind of first of all, Deku's been in their shoes, but he'll also realise that he's on the other side of the he's on the other side of the coin uh, in this time at this time. So it'll be kind of interesting. But yeah, I truly think we're going into an arc where it's like quirk negation. This is what Overhaul's planning to do pretty much, because Overhaul wants to destroy justice. So it seems like he wants to just because it. We saw in this chapter a thug, he had, he had a bullet, so it seems like he's already kind of, um, what's the word, he's kind of circulated this drug, circulated this, these bullets, around to the villain underground, the villain underbelly. So that is kind of pretty interesting, but it also makes me think, okay, um, it's been circulated. Now, it, let's say hypothetically, uh, a, a mass percentage of the hero population gets taken out what's that gonna do to ua um what that's gonna do to like all my all this kind of stuff like this is the thing ua they've been they've been taken down too many times by the uh, like they've been they've been taken serious hits whether it be by the media whether it be by the villainous uh, alliance whatever um 
and if this like the repercussions there's so many heroes losing their quirks if this if this is the arc that we're kind of going into if this is the storyline that we're about to develop into um that would be kind of crazy now i generally hope um this quirk negation thing i, I hope it's not permanent this this bullet but um i kind of think it is and if it is, I, this is why I think Eri comes into it. Now, Eri, you remember the character that got introduced a couple of chapters back, who Oval claimed for her to be his daughter. Um, she had bandages all over her arms, and when she was walking back into the underground, into the HQ, Oval, we saw like a medicine chair, like a medicine bed with syringes and all that kind of stuff, uh, and like IV pipes and all that stuff. So, it's either that Eri has a quirk which can negate other people's quirks, similar to all for ones, but instead of taking it, it just negates them. Um, or Eri has a quirk which can kind of give it back. I'm not sure. I think it's probably both. She can like she can like negate it and then reactivate. And I feel that's why Oval probably kidnapped her just to take that quirk and obviously get her blood so she can kind of do. Uh, some stuff with it. Now, bear in mind, not long ago, Toga took Deku's blood. Blood. Now, I kind of feel like this is all going to tie together. I don't know what Deku's blood's going to do with this arc, with the whole because we're doing a lot of stuff with the blood and with quirks. And obviously, the Villain Alliance have Deku's blood. So when Shigaraki is going to be wagering, uh, bringing that, uh, negotiating with uh, Oval, Shigaraki's like, "Don't forget, I've got this kid's blood." Maybe something like that. I'm not really sure. But I'm just loving how everything's tying in together. And if it, this is going to be like a quirk negation kind of arc, um, maybe Aerie's the one who's, uh, who naturally has this quirk to negate him. She probably maybe, maybe she can activate quirks as well. Um, because also remember, all for one had the ability to force activate quirks. Um, so that was kind of powerful as well. So yeah, Oval's kind of seeming like, Oval's kind of adapting some of the principles of uh, well, all for one and trying to make it his own. So that's pretty interesting. Now I'm interested... I'm, I'm more interested with this whole uh, uh, team up, you could say, with the Villain Knights and the Yakuza. The Yakuza, it, Shigaraki basically re-emphasized re it in this chapter. It made more sense to me that the Yakuza want the Villain Knights not only for their name, but for their power as well. Because what the, the Yakuza, what Oval wants to do, he can't do it by himself. So he does need Shigaraki. So it can't be like, Shigaraki, Oval's not going to be able to get Shigaraki to totally... Um, be underneath him. It has. It's probably. It probably has to be a 50-50 deal. But I just want to point out how mature Shigaraki composed himself to it. I really thought you. Um, no, it, I. I thought I wanted the Shigaraki to go and say yes, and I thought for the sake of the story he was. But I generally didn't think he was going to carry himself in such a mature way. Um, to an extent, mature to, to an extent. But I even loved it when they were like, "Don't get cocky." And he was like, "Who do you guys think you are? We're still down one arm." And I was just like, "Whoa." His response, he was just like, don't you, don't you ever think one of your Yakuza shields are equal to Magnina? And then he was bringing up his hand, and I was just like, yo, Shigaraki's about to release the flames. And I was, it was going to be lit, bro. It was absolutely going to be hype if Shigaraki came in like a beast, because that would have been fantastic. I can't wait to see Shigaraki be in battle again, see him fight. Just see him get angry, to be honest. Um, that's going to be eight. That's going to be amazing. But, um... As I was saying, with Shigaraki, it seemed, there was a level of maturity, a level of composing himself in the way, a level, a level of uh, calmness, you could say, in the way that he composed himself. Uh, that's what I personally think. Uh, you guys, may, maybe you, you you're, maybe you can beg to differ. Uh, let me know in the thoughts, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But um, I generally do think Shigaraki has grown a bit, and we saw it in the way that he he carried himself. With L4, yes, uh, he was saying stuff like, don't you, don't think, uh, young boss or, like, Mr. Boss, he says something like that. But, like, still, Shigaraki, Shigaraki, that's just part of his character, but he has grown, in my opinion, definitely. Now, at the end of the chapter, we see a little bit on Amajak, Amajiki, I believe, um, he's one of the big three. Now, I kind of like his character, like, he, he seems a little bit shy, and he just, he doesn't seem motivated to do it. Like, obviously, he wants to be a hero, but he's not, like, the happy-go-lucky, like, Mirio, All Might, and, like, um, who else, like, uh, Uraraku, you could say. Like them. She's not really like that, but I kind of like his character. It's kind of interesting. It's a new fresh take on things as well, especially in such a heroic society and setting like Volcano Hero Academia. His quirk is awesome. Reappearance. Anything he consumes, he can just like, um, it, it, he could, uh, what was it? He can take on those characteristics on his body. So he ate octopus and he, and his fingers like came out of the octopus. He was, he ate crab in his hand. And it seems like in his costume he's got pouches. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has like food in there and he can just, you know, take a munch and then boom. Um, he can, 
Uh, yeah, I'm kind of intrigued to his quirk as well, like, m into more depth. I'm wondering, uh, does the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, the, uh, the activating of these characteristics, does him actually taking on these characteristics, is that instantaneous as soon as he's, like, swallowed something? Or does it have to be, like, digested? Because if you think about it, I'm just trying to look from it, like, from a biological viewpoint. Um, obviously not so advanced, because I don't know. But, um, it seems... He's taken on the characteristics of an organism, of an animal that he's eaten. Surely, for him, to, he surely that can only happen when he's digested it and he's gotten all the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, you could say, attributes, all the, um, the um, molecules and the microbes, all that kind of stuff from that organism. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of intrigued by how it actually works because that would be pretty awesome. But I'm really intrigued how this bullet works as well. How does it negate it? How does it disable it? How does it remove it? Whatever you may say. We don't really know much on about it. But the thing is, um, when I was reading this chapter, I remember the chapter in the sports festival. It's what Bakugo said. Bakugo said that our quirks are an extension of our physical bodies. It's like our muscles. So I know a lot of people are thinking that... Um, well, the next, that's how I feel. That that's what Bakugo says. So that's what I believe. Um, so I... So their quirks are basically like an extension of their muscles. Just as you like, uh, as you like, uh, just move your body around. So are they activating their quirks? So it's natural to them. And obviously, all, all our movements in our bodies are coordinated by the brain. So it seems like when this is shot, it definitely messes up with your synapses or something in your brain, uh, which probably stops the signal from flowing to activate the quirk. Something like that. Now, if it's permanent, maybe it just destroys that synapse or it just destroys that signal. Um, or if it's, you know, temporarily, it can, maybe it freezes it. Something like that. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens in the next couple of chapters. But I'm, I'm so excited that it's Kirishima's time to shine because Horikoshi's got a wide cast and I love what he does with his characters. He grows them and he strengthens them. And you see in this chapter, Kirishima's just like, I've been left out of the loop. I haven't been as strong as people. And you see some of the flashbacks, like, in the, uh, in the exam arc, um, when he got uh, turned into the pile of mush. Like, he obviously feels like that. And I feel like Kirishima, Kirishima's one of the main characters in Class 1A, but he hasn't had a lot of time. He hasn't been so much in the spotlight. For example, he went in the Stain arc. Like, he didn't really do much, so I'm kind of excited to see what he's going to do in the next couple of chapters. I'm pretty stoked. So, guys, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below what you thought about this chapter. The colour pages were lit. Um, you know, all the success. 10 million copies! Boku no Hero has sold the volumes. That is... Um, that's fantastic, it really is. And the other colour page is awesome. I just love it when you see um, All Might holding that Dragon Slayer sword. It just looks hype. So, Shin Sam subscribe for weekly reviews of Boku no Hero. And I'll see you next week for that greatness that is chapter 133. Peace out, guys, and goodbye.